This Starbase summary was filmed in front of a live studio audience. And we are back. It's time for another Starbase summary. If you've been keeping along, it's October 1st through the 3rd out here at Starbase. Uh, we were supposed to have a hook to start the video here, but there's no hook. I didn't prepare in advance, so we're just going to go ahead and talk about this. Maybe the hook is crane parts today. We're going to be talking through the footage like we do a couple times a week out here at Starbase. Now, what we see on the screen there are parts of those massive crane leaving the launch site. We saw the last couple days, if you watched the last summary, the smaller crane sort of cannibalizing the larger crane, helping take it apart. I think there were some cool tool chain comments down below, but we see those rolling away from Starbase. Over here, we're going to check in with the Gigabay concrete pour. Uh, I think we are of the agreement that you pour concrete because it acts like a fluid. People in the comments, you want to say place it? Nah, we're going to go with pour. Here's a wide shot from the production site. This is actually driving into Starbase on Highway 4. You can see the Rocket Garden on the left. Look at that. See? I didn't even plan that. It just happened. With boosters 15-2, which is coming up next for flight, and the other two there in the background. Going to get a couple closer shots here. Now, the movie magic is I didn't read fast enough what the titles were, and so I'm just going to keep talking as if it's no big deal. Thank you, Jack. So here we have out some wildlife. It's a pelican looking for dinner. Is it going to get some dinner? You know, I've been seeing a lot of awesome comments down below every video. Oh, nope, it was taken off. I thought it was going for a fish. Of everybody loving the wildlife shots that we've got here, I really do think that we should spend some time and see if we can't get a wildlife expert to come through and identify some of these for us. But uh, that'll be in work. <laughs> that bird's name is Bob, Jack. You know what we didn't tell anybody is that I'm recording this live at the meetup. <laughs> In any event, there is the concrete structure, the apartment that they've been working on for a while. It looks like it's going to have lots of uh, balconies sort of facing the direction of the site. No, is that a concrete sander or something? It's been a long time since we've had one of those smoothers or sanders on there. Huh. That's like original star-based tank watching happening. So here, we're over near the highway site, looking back towards the production site, the two mega bays in there. The gigabay is going to be on the left-hand side. And then we're going to turn around from a similar position and look over at the production site. It's pad two on the left-hand side. There you can tell there's a triangle bunker at the bottom. That's actually the launch mount. Look at that. It enhanced right when we started talking about it. And there is orbital pad two. Now, hopefully... This one actually turns out being orbital at some point. The other one, is it OLM orbital launch pad or is it OLM original launch pad? We may have to edit some of the uh, older videos there. You can continue to see the scale of the launch pad there with the folks working underneath. We saw this time in the last video, if you saw that, the uh, reflection of the sun glinting off of those plates. But again, the whole plan here is that they need to be able to have a cadence from these pads. So they did the original launch mount design, it worked the first time, kind of. And it worked better the other nine times. Hopefully we get a flight 11 coming up shortly as well. But uh, this second design, we expect to see mostly duplicated over on the first pad after they demolish it. We're gonna zoom in real quick on the booster cuties. This is another new feature that we're supposed to do a video about at some point to explain why there's two cuties on the new pad and how the uh, organization, maybe I should have looked at Alex. Maybe I should have looked at the script. We need a script from Alex <laughs> to explain why there's two cuties. And then peeking into the draw works there, uh, the massive cable. It's another thing that gets corrected on. It's not multiple cables. It's a single cable. Well, there's the big cable on the spool that you can see in the draw works. Here's the mega bunker with the SpaceX aesthetic uh, area, the, the little break area sort of facing away from the pad. You can see that's tower one in the background behind it. And then that's tower two from this angle. But I imagine a lot like we see at the Star Factory, are they going to have some of the uh, little break areas, the tables, little see workers sitting there? All right, locks pumps. I got corrected on this last time. What you see at the top, those gray things are actually the motors for the pumps. And the pumps are down below it. And we're going to hop over to, <laughs> you like that? We're going to hop over to Starhopper? Yeah. <laughs> I worked that out myself. Um, actually, b below Starhopper there is where we put the a trailer. We call that Danger Lot now. Got a sunset shot from Caesar here of the two towers. 
it's pad one on the left, is it? Yeah, because the filling station's there, and pad two on the right. Got some more daytime here. I saw a lot of comments asking for us to do the like three hours of cryo loading, where we just put a camera down and make a time lapse and just upload it to YouTube because uh, well, the crane is less exciting than the cryo tankers usually are. And you know, the other thing that's going on is I don't, okay, we're halfway through, good deal. So here we've got the sun setting with the silhouette of the loading area. Each one of those green lights is a different filling station. You can sort of see the lights stacking along there where the trucks back up to unload the propellants and fuel. There's a lift. That's one of those big SpaceX branded lifts at the base of the tower there. I'm going to guess that that's tower two. And not sure. What are, we're, we're putting an office chair into it. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, so thought that there would be some important, you know, electrical raceway conduit, and it's it's a spinny chair. Here we've got some grinding happening on some conduit under pad two. We always talk about that stack stack me heart that's up there. I wonder if they're going to wait to remove that till we have a. Is it removed now? Yeah. Well, we haven't gotten to that part of the video. Well, Spoilers. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been on the road. I didn't. I couldn't keep up with Starbase Live, which you can watch 24-7 um, <laughs> in any event. Continuing to uh, work underneath pad two. <laughs> I also usually don't have live feedback when I record these, so I, I sort of appreciate that. I have to wait till the comments come in. Great, sweetie. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> More concrete, <laughs> concrete being, uh, I guess you gotta goosh it around a little bit. <laughs> like. I like all the guys standing around watching the, the boom work. And then, that, does the guy have a broom in the foreground? Is he like a security guard with a stick? I'm not sure. A shovel, that might make some sense. We've seen a lot of flag action lately. Uh, if you watch our CP11 camera there across from the production site, uh, you either see flag action or you see a truck blocking the view. But uh, we have seen various workers deployed at that position, waving trucks to one direction or the other. Here you can see there's multiple, what do we got? Two plus a lift or three concrete pumpers there, sort of working on that Gigabay Foundation. This is another great place. Like, it's so cool to see, they look like animals, right? Like drinking from the watering hole, except they're barfing up concrete, I guess, <laughs> instead of drinking from the watering hole. So the analogy doesn't work. Um, but it's so cool to see all of the work happening. We're going to go up the road to Massey's a bit, getting a little close to Massey's here. There's a little like a drawbridge sort of thing, a causeway you can walk across. Zooming in on 18.1 and 18.3, the test tanks. One's in the can crusher where they exert those hydraulic forces to, to put different loads on it while they pump it full of cryo liquids and pressures and temperatures and that sort of stuff. And then in the background, the one they've been cryo testing. I love labels like this. It's a new structure, y'all. If I had a nickel for every time there was a new structure at Starbase. Sometimes I'd get two or three nickels for the same structure because they put it up and they take it down and they put it up and they take it down. Um, but we will see if we get some more context. I see a big crane. I see a side of the tank there. We're still at Massey's, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So some cryo stations over there. You can always see the little, the little X arms that stick up from the top of the, uh, the quick disconnect there. You can always tell when you're looking at a quick disconnect because they have that weird thing. Also, another thrilling label. It's a storage tent. It actually looks like a Home Depot in there. Was, I don't know if y'all have Home Depots over here, but it's like the building goods store where they have all the racks of equipment, right? More shots of the bunker construction as well. This is interesting because it's over on the edge of Massey's. Now, are they moving some of the control equipment? You know, so it's not right next to the thing that might explode. What? <laughs> it's less booms. So I, they've put it sort of over on the edge. Hopefully it's a little bit more separated from the explosions. I'm gonna do a quick, Jack, which direction is this? Tilt. Thank you, it's a tilt <laughs> up tower two. <laughs> It's actually kind of nice to having people I can call on while I do this. <laughs> Looking at the work on the structure. Still a bunch of scaffolding around. Remember, we've seen some shots of that cutie arm that uh, is still back at the assembly yard. Got a couple little lines and stuff. Oh, wow, look at those big pipes inside the tower, sort of uh, internal to the structure. 
I'm still wondering if we're not going to see some more shielding to protect those as we uh, see that tower get finished out. An oh, the Stackney sign is gone. That's what we're pointing out here. So now the heart's gone, apparently. <laughs> going to hop over to orbital pad one really quickly and uh, see a piece of grass waving in front of it. That's another thing that happens in these all the time. Like sometimes there's things displayed in the clips and I don't always notice it. And it's a little embarrassing when people come back and they're like, did you see the grinder wheels stuck? And I'm like, nope, I didn't see that. I do this live, there were no notes. Um, gonna look at some chopstick stabilizer testing here. Little lift. Oh yeah, there, you can see it actually moving back and forth. It's waving at you. And that brings it to the end of this Starbase summary. We're going to close it out with a, are we got a pelican there? Yeah, another pelican out in the water. Folks, my name's been John. I appreciate y'all watching. You know how to keep up with us. Like and subscribe or whatever. Big thanks to the team who are keeping these things going. And by the way, if you didn't notice over the course of the recording, we were recording this one live from the UK EU meetup out <laughs> in London. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you nerds later.